Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Acts 1 through 3, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Especially share it with somebody that needs a daily devotion. Acts 1, written by Dr. Luke, same Luke that wrote uh, the Gospel Luke. He's more detailed. He's a detailed guy. He talks about the early church, the building of the church, what the church should look like. So if you're a new pastor or walking into a new church situation, Acts is one of the first places you want to be. This is what the church look, should look like. It covers about 30 years after Jesus is taken up and the Holy Spirit comes during this time. Acts 1-3, through three, Luke explains uh, during the 40 days between the resurrection and the si and ascension, uh, Jesus appeared to disciples from time to time and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. Verse 3, he ate food. Uh, they were able to touch him. He was in a new glorified type body. He was restored yet alive. So he had the nail holes in his hand and the, the piercing in his side. He wasn't like a zombie. He was like newly restored in his glorified body. Verses 4 through 5, Jesus told his disciples not to leave Jerusalem. He says, in just a few days, I will, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, verse 5. And in 6 through 11, verse 8 says, you will re receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And these are four different areas we as Christians should be Jesus' witnesses as well. Jews, Jerusalem being right there, right there locally. Um, Judea being more like your, the size of your state maybe. And then Samaria was the entire country. So that includes Judea, was the southern kingdom. Samaria was the northern kingdom. Combined, that's the whole country of Israel. So we should be witnesses in our whole country. And then ends to the ends of the earth. So we should witness uh, in every situation, locally, in faraway places, and into the ends of the earth. So after saying this, Jesus was taken up into a cloud while they were watching. As they were standing there, they saw two white-robed men suddenly stood among them and they said uh, why are you standing here staring into heaven verse 11 Jesus has been taken from you into heaven but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go the disciples went back to Jerusalem to the upstairs room where they were staying constantly united in prayer along with Mary the mother of Jesus and several other women and the brother of Jesus this is probably James he led the new church he became a believer after Jesus' death, and he started the, the church in Jerusalem. Verse 15, during this time, there were about 120 believers gathered together. So we're walking on down the road a few more days. About 120 believers were together in one place. Peter stood up and addressed them. Uh, he went on talking about Judas's betrayal and death and his replacement. The replacement, they say, must have been with us the entire time during our travels with Jesus from the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. They nominated two men, Joseph, called Bersabbas, also known as Justice, who we named our son after. That's verse 22. And Matthias. Uh, they prayed about it. They cast lots. And Mas Matthias was the one chosen. But Justice is a cooler name, so that's why we named our kid Justice. Uh, Acts 2. One day, uh, the day of Pentecost, the believers were meeting together. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like a roaring windstorm came and filled the entire house. Flames or tongues of fire um, settled on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit at this time. They spoke in different languages or different tongues, yet everyone understood the other. And they were all from, these, these people were all from different countries, um, and they, they were dispersed quickly after that. And that's why the gospel message spread so quickly. So every all of them heard the gospel message that day. 3,000 it says in all. And then they were dispersed because of the rumblings in Jerusalem. And just the persecution that happened in Jerusalem. So they were dispersed throughout the world. That's why the gospel message spread so quickly. But yet other people thought they were drunk. So some many, many people believed, but others thought they were drunk. Peter says... In verse 15, these people aren't drunk, it's 9 a.m. in the morning. No, this was prophesied by the prophet Joel. 
Verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour up my spirit upon all people. And in verse 21, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter talks about Jesus' betrayal, uh, him being killed, him rising from the dead. We're all a part of God's prearranged plan. And in the last part of 24, for death could not keep him in its grip. Verse 32, God raised him from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. So they had, you know, they could carry on the truth because they had seen it. They had seen the truth happen. No one would be willing to die for a lie, but truth will continue to be exposed. That's why the gospel message continues on today. Peter talks about repenting, being baptized, receiving the Holy Spirit, and that this is possible for all. Gentiles as well. In verse 41, the last part, about 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Verses Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. All believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. So again, Acts talks about what the church should look like. Here we go again. The apostles' teaching, which is what we're still learning about today in God's Word, to fellowship, being together. Don't You don't do church by yourself. I, I know that's a little different during COVID right now. We have to do a little bit of self-worship type thing, but or worship uh, in isolation a little bit, and to sharing in meals and to prayer. Good stuff. For the last part of 44, they shared everything they had. They sold their property and the possessions and shared their money with all those in need. Acts 3, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon. As they were approaching, a lame man asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, it says. And Peter says, I don't have silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk, verse 6. Walking and leaping, it says, he went to the temple with them. People recognized this man as the beggar outside. And Peter, here, catch this. This is verses, chapter 3, verses 12 through 26. Peter used this opportunity. And that's what we're called to do as Christians is to use opportunities placed before you. And that's exactly what Peter does. He doesn't go around and beat people over the head with it, but he uses opportunities. And God will continue to place you in opportunities to share the good news about Jesus. So Peter used this opportunity to address the crowd. Um, address the crowd. Why are you staring at us as though we... I made this man walk by our own power, our own godliness, it says. Peter talks about Jesus' death and resurrection. And in verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We, again, here it goes again, we are all witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And he goes on to say, he asked the people to repent of their sins and turn to God. And that's what I'm here to do to you. Turn from God. Believe, turn to God. Repent from your sin. Believe that we're all done bad things. The Bible calls that sin. The wages for sin is death. The death penalty. You were, we're not only going to die physically, we're going to die spiritually, meaning separated from God forever. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So before we got ourselves right, God still died for us in our place. And those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And saves can be a scary word to a lot of people, but all that means is you're made right with God once again. God bless you. Like, subscribe, and share.